Welcome back to Trigonometry. Today we're going to be doing Dumavra's theorem. And in every time I've ever seen this publicly announced or pronounced, no single person has ever pronounced this the same way. I got this off a web page from Stanford saying it should be Dumavra. And we had somebody in here who knows a French person who thought that was something like, right? <laughs> it's true. Uh, before we go on, I have very heartfelt sad news. The t-shirt of disgust is no longer with us. I'm afraid some janitors found him and threw him away. Uh, the producer, though, has brought us a new t-shirt, which is from the Fun Run, which uh, is our now new t-shirt of disgust, but it's not disgusting yet, so I guess we'll just call it uh, Fun Run t-shirt. Okay, so, hello, I'm Fun Run t-shirt. Now, let's go back to work. Dumavra's theorem is listed in, on the web page as this. Of course, this is, and this is the same thing, but here is what we talked about, and this is how you're going to use it to see it, and be shocked and amazed by, is that cosine x plus i sine x to the nth power is equal to cosine nx plus i sine and x, and I want you to think about how amazing this is, because I, I don't remember what I did in the last episode, because I, I went out of town for a bit, but remember uh, a plus b uh, to the n is equal to a n plus b n? Remember how that's not true in, <laughs> in general? Actually, it is in a field of characteristic two, but we call this uh, a plus b squared equals a squared plus b squared. We call this the freshman's dream. And for some reason, just about everybody in a freshman college level algebra class thinks that this is true. Uh, this is not true. And we have uh, one of the nice things about working at UAF is we have minuses. So I'm actually allowed to give people F minuses, which I don't. But threatening to give somebody an F minus just makes us teachers feel warm and fuzzy all over. Okay, so enough of that joyous talk. I was going to be in a band called F minus one time, but believe it or not, somebody actually already was. Okay. So I want to re impress upon you everything we've already talked about in the complex plane because this is so marvelous and wonderfully important. And if any of you are going into serious science or engineering uh, or philosophy, for that matter, there's uh, complex logic. Uh, this, is, this is the next step up in regular thinking, and it's wonderful. Remember some things, some notation. Uh, in general, we let z is a plus i b, where a and b are real numbers, and um, this weird little symbol here, that means I belong to, I'm an element, this R, script R is for real numbers. The complex conjugate of Z is simply A minus IB, right? So this, these are basic notations. Sometimes the conjugate notation is a little different depending on uh, what book you're using, but this should all be pretty straightforward too. I want to think about what this picture looks like in the complex plane. This one here, we have this. So this is the x-axis, this is the y-i-axis, or this is called the real axis and the imaginary axis. And I'm just going to pretend that a plus i b, I'm going to let z be up here. So, so this is a plus i b. As it happens, this is 2, this is 3, this is 3 plus, uh, oh sorry, my bad, this is 2 plus 3i. And right away I want to assure you that it's okay, and we do this, we'll do this. I wrote this as i b, but I wrote this as 3i. People get freaked out about this all the time. It, it's just a matter of, of uh, tradition. We, when we don't know what b is, we write it as a plus ib. 
When we do, we write it as 2 plus 3i. But if this is the square root, like we would not write the square root of 3i because the i might be inside of the square root, so we write it i the square root of 3. I have seen instructors make a big deal about where the i is. As long as the i is on this side of the plus sign, you've got it right. <laughs> and if they're making a big deal about it, it probably means they need a vacation or possibly a brain transplant like I just had in Anchorage. It was fun. Okay, so if this is z equals a plus iv, where is the complex conjugate loop? Well, a minus iv, in this case it'll be 2 minus i3. Well, this is the same as 2 minus 3i, or you could write it as 2 plus minus 3i. The whole deal is b is minus 3, right? So here's minus 3. So this is here. So this is z bar. And what, so what happened is, if z is up here, z bar is reflected across the x-axis, okay? And it's important to get this notion of the geometry. The complex plane is so rich for its geometrical uh, contributions to mathematic, mathematics. Uh, also, remember the norm of a complex number. The norm of z, which looks like absolute value bars, and in, in some sense it has that um, kind of idea with it, this is defined as z times z bar square root. Uh, I'll show you this so you remember why this is. Uh, z times z bar is a plus iv times a minus iv. When you FOIL this out, this is a squared plus aiv, or iav, whatever, uh, plus this. I'll write it as uh, abi. Then it's going to be minus, from this contribution, minus abi. As you can see, these terms are going to wash. And then it's going to be minus i squared b squared. I'll take a new color. So these cancel out. Minus i squared, well, i is the square root of negative 1. i squared, then, is negative 1 minus i squared is positive 1. So this is a squared plus b squared. Remember, we have to take the square root. And what is this? This is the length of this. Remember, so if you have this, oops, ow, you will have it straight enough. No, it's not. OK, so here's our triangle. This is b. This is a. This is a squared plus b squared square root. So here's this really wonderfully important relationship we have. The norm of any complex number is simply how far the, this hypotenuse is in this triangle that you would draw. And that's what de Mauvray, or however you say his name, what he did, and what we're going to see is that he connected trigonometry to the complex plane, which is really very, very neat. Oh, also, just for notation, most of the time, uh, if I do this, this is r, right? Because this is this radius right here. So some, some books will use h. Don't sweat it. Uh, the fact is, if you read your chapters before you go in and do the homework and watch your lectures or your teachers, whatever the context these things are will make perfect sense. My producer says we got just under a minute for this tape, and I'll be right back.